Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at um, a problem that all economies around the world face in relative scarcity, uh, what is meant by the factors of production and what is meant by the term opportunity cost. So relative scarcity is the basic economic problem that our wants and are unlimited, while our resources, which are land, labour, capital and entrepreneurship, and we'll talk about this in the next video, uh, sorry, next slide, are limited. So the economy has unlimited wants while our resources are limited. So there's an imbalance between our wants and our resources. The aim of any society is to use their limited resources to maximize living standards. So basically what an example of relative scarcity, say you're hungry and thirsty on your way home from school and you have five dollars to spend. A sandwich is going to cost you four dollars, uh, drink three dollars and a pie two dollars. If you buy the sandwich you'll have one dollar change but won't be able to afford a drink. You could afford a drink if you buy the pie, but the pie won't satisfy your hunger as much as the sandwich would. You are facing the fundamental problem of relative scarcity as you don't have enough money to make all these options and therefore you need to make a choice. So when we're looking at relative scarcity in economics, we're saying that our resources, our land, labour, capital and entrepreneurship are limited or scarce. So the factors of production are the inputs that are used in the production of goods or services in order to make an economic profit. So the factors of production include land, labour, capital and entrepreneurship and the quality of a nation's factors of production, so the quality of these four things um, will impact the living standards of citizens. And we looked at that a little bit when we played the game in class where each country got given different factors of production, whether that was paper or scissors or compasses or protractors. So essentially each of these factors of production are limited and we need to make choices about how we're going to use them to maximise our living standards. So land or natural resources, that refers to all the natural resources we use in the production process. So that can be fresh water, wood, iron, oil, um, oceans, coal, anytime we use natural resources in order to make goods and services. Labour or human resources are the people power that work in the production process. So that's all the people that go about making goods and services. So that can be plumbers, builders, fashion designers, teachers. And basically they combine their mental and physical effort in order to make, make goods and services. Capital resources are basically a combination of labour and land resources, or sorry, basically land resources being turned into future products, the man-made products to help in the production process. That includes the building, factories, plants, machinery, all used to make goods and services. Computers, trucks, ladders, tools, etc. Resources made from labour and natural resources to create other goods and services. For something to be classified as a capital resource, it must be used to make other goods and services. So what I mean by that is if you've got a hammer at home that you're not actually making goods and services with to sell, then it's not a capital resource. A capital resource is only a capital resource if it's being used to make further goods and services. So if that hammer is being used to make something that you're going to sell for at a profit, then it's a capital resource. Cars, for example, are not a capital resource if you're just using them to get around yourself. If you're using them to um, sell pizzas or if it's a truck or something for delivery, then it is a capital resource. And the last one, entrepreneurs are the owners or risk takers in the production process. So they're the ones that coordinate land, labour and capital resources and try and make a profit. These are the people that generally take risks in order to try and make profits for their businesses. So entrepreneurs will be people that, make, that start their own businesses. So people like Richard Branson and Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg that run their own companies. And it can also be people that run small businesses as well, like sole proprietors. Um, basically, for any economy, they have scarce or limited factors of production. So our wants are unlimited, but our resources, our different factors of production are limited, which means we need to make choices. We need to make choices as to where we're going to allocate our scarce resources to try and maximise our living standards. Every choice involves a trade-off, which means we have to give up something in order to make more of something else. So specific choices might be whether to rent or buy a home, um, and you have to weigh out the costs and benefits of each decision. Do you work part-time or full-time? Do you study while you do a degree? Um, governments, individuals, businesses are all have to make choices. When we make a choice, it involves trade-offs, and a trade-off is all the other things we give up. The specific next best alternative when we make a choice is referred to as the opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative that is forgone when a choice is made. So the next best thing you choose not to do. So if you decide that you want to become a lawyer, and the next best thing you'd want to do with your labour resources is to become a carpenter, then a carpenter would be your opportunity cost. If you spent $5 on a sandwich, 
and your next best alternative would be to spend it on a sausage roll, that would be your opportunity cost. So it's just the next best alternative use of whatever you use your resources for. Opportunity cost can be measured in dollar terms, so what you give up um, in terms of how much it would cost, how much time. So if you dedicate an hour to homework, your opportunity cost may be the hour you could have spent uh, going for a run or watching TV. Um, opportunity costs exist for all economic actors. So for individuals, if you decide to study for accounting, you might give up going for a run or studying chemistry. If you stay in school until year 12, you might give up the opportunity to earn an income from getting a job. Um, if you spend 2000 on an iPhone, the opportunity cost um, may be that you can't go on a holiday. If governments spend $30 billion on defence, they may have to cut back on welfare or health. Whatever they value second most is their opportunity cost. We'll talk about indicators of economic performance in the next video.